Day four was the grain prompt. So I did this sack that's pouring grain onto the floor. Here is a little time lapse of that process. So I started out with the quick sketch with the annotation tool and I went straight into making the like general form of the uh, the pour. So I've got the pile on the floor and the, like, the shoot of grain coming up above it. Um, I'm using some linear light mixed in to get some noise mixed in just so I can get the variation on the surface and a map range just so I can scale the bottom and the top of that pile independently. Uh, I ended up masking it out so that the uh, the vertical part does not have any of the noise on it just because it was, it was a little bit too extreme. Next thing I wanted to do was to rotate the top part of the vertical just so that I can get the mesh in the correct position for the sack. Uh, I wanted to do this really early on just so that I didn't get any weird deformation after having shaped the sack. I wanted to know that the sack was going to end up in the correct shape after the fact. Um, what I did here was I just put in a noise texture because I want to have the grain looking like it's pouring down. I masked out between the vertical part and the, the pile and I used that to control two different uh, divide amounts. So I'm dividing the hashtag frame input and this is controlling the Z position of the, the grain so that it's pouring faster on the vertical than it goes down the slope. Uh, I'm just working on the sack here, so making sure that I've got it masked out nicely and using the X and Y components of the generated coordinates to have some kind of input to change the scale of it and shift the mesh around. Uh, so I started out by just adding a whole lump to the top, just using a, an RGB curve to have the manual control and then did the same for the inverse, just on the lower side of that X. Uh, the X component. After that I sorted out the, the length a little bit, tried to work out how to get the top to look like it had a bit more of a kind of square shape as if it was actually stitched together like a sack was. And then I added some more depth in the Y axis. Uh, you can see I use the annotation tool quite a lot just to mark on things that I think are sort of intuitively in place just so that I can work to those lines. Um, I just changed a couple of my map ranges to be smooth so that instead of smooth instead of linear so that I can get the roundness as I do this lip around the top of the sack so it looks like it's been rolled back. And then I've added another noise texture here which I've compressed in the Z axis so that I've got this sort of fabric ripple effect. I wanted to make it look like it probably had folds running up it uh, just to add to the fabric sack effect as the grain's pouring out. To give myself the two points, like the pointy ears of the bag, I've just added two distances um, so that I can put essentially cones coming out there, um, which I can pull up in the Z direction and then I can pull the top one in a positive, uh, sorry, in a negative X and the bottom one went in a positive X just to pull them apart as well, make it a little bit more rectangular. Trying to control the amount of that noise on there and just working on the general proportions. What I'm doing here is I'm just adding a, a distance underneath and I am extruding that inside. Just You ended up not being able to see it, but it was just to add a little bit of depth inside the sack to make it look more, more three-dimensional. I tried here, but I didn't manage to get it working to pull up the bit of the mesh and turn it as, uh, as a volume. I thought it was going to be cool if I could get some like dust effects rolling off it, but I think the the mesh being inside out was an issue. Working on the actual textures here, um, generating a sort of a weave pattern just using the, uh, if you take Y modulo 2 less than 1, that's going to give you an, uh, every other row, and then I add that to the X, and then this becomes my new Y coordinate. Um, do the same flipped for the coordinates the other way. I do have a stream on this if you're interested. Um, but that just allows me to generate the mesh weave very quickly. I want to add a node vamba logo now. So I'm just doing this again with nodes. So I've generated my position, used absolute and subtract, and then a maximum to give myself the length. Um, so I'm able to get that kind of round cornered cube look.
ended up using two of these and subtracted one from the other so that I had the the outline look there and then I used a range mask to select a band and just turned that to red so I got the colors used a couple of distances to give me the node connection and then I created a linear gradient in between those two points and then just put it through a smoother step to give me the S curve then give myself a background just with another distance and so that was positioned on the front trying to add a little bit more variation dirt crime things like that just with uh, I'm using burn at the moment but I change it over to multiply just putting a bit of noise over there just masked out the two different sections so I've got the sackcloth and I have the grain separate materials here that need to be combined to be masked together I'm using my moving coordinates the ones that are driven by the frame value and I'm using this to drive a couple of things a Voronoi which is the actual shape of the grains as well as this one which is a wave texture so I can get this kind of cartoon looking dust rolling down surface look um, I've used a, a radial gradient to break into segments and then I've randomized those segments by essentially doing like wave multiply snap and then putting that through a white noise texture um, so that's giving me a random random scale for the waves so that each section of that each section of the wave rolls down at a different speed basically the rest of this was really just tweaking adding little bits of detail and dirt to edges I found if I zoomed out quite a long way I was able to actually compute this in real time so it would give me a little bit of a awareness of what's going on I wanted to make the bag look like it was uh, moving around so it wasn't just completely static I did a rotation just like how I did before found where I'd rotated over the bag and in this case we used a one dimensional noise texture being driven by the frame value that's going through a separate RGB so I can take two different factors each one goes through its own map range and then they go into the X and the Z rotation values as with all the other ones I've created this uh, this RGB curve to be able to blend to the sphere and have the clay w clay wipe around and I decided in this one to have it go from the sphere at the first frame and the sphere at the end frame so that I could loop it perfectly without having to worry about looping while there's the grain flowing down and trying to match those up so it just rotates then and then in post I just cut it in the middle so it was recut to have the clay wipe further on I went back in and I added some of the displacement some of the sackcloth texture to the displacement just give me the extra texture there and I shrunk down the pouring grain a little bit because it was a little bit too thick 